Grace and peace, friends and family. Welcome to another conversation. This is Joy, founder of Pain Girl Teaches. For those that don't know, I am a certified life coach and I help victims come out of the or transition out of the fog after being involved with a narcissist. Um, today, I wanted to have a conversation with you about what happens when the narcissist knows that you know, like you are busted. I want to share this passage with you. It's Matthew chapter 10, verse 16. And it says, Behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. Be therefore wise as serpents and harmless as doves. Now, in order for you to get the full context of what Jesus was saying at the time, because he was talking to the disciples, I encourage you to go read the entire chapter. But what do you do? When you are sick and tired of the narcissist and you know, you know who they are and you're tired of their games and you feel like, listen, I'm going to let them know that I know exactly who they are. I want you to consider for a moment what that would mean and what that would do. You see that passage and I chose this one because it told us to be wise as serpents, right? And these are Jesus's words. And it says that he sent the sheep in the midst of wolves. And it's how we feel like when we're in these relationships and situations with narcissists, when we get to understand that they're nothing more than wolves in sheep's clothing. And here you are, innocent, didn't know what you were getting yourself into, but they were cunning. They were cunning. They were just like the serpent in the garden. But we're being told here to be wise as serpents. You see, wisdom, according to uh, Wikipedia, right, is the ability to think and act using knowledge, experience, understanding, common sense, and insight. So when you consider the relationship with the narcissist and what you know about them, like your experience, not what you've read on a blog or what a video has told you about who they are and how they behave and that kind of thing, but rely on your own experience with that person. You know who they are. And in all honesty, they know who they are. They don't need you to tell them who they are because they themselves know who they are. So if you expose them or if you let them know that you know or if they have any inclination that you know all the gloves are coming off okay the gloves are coming off and it's fight time are you ready and are you willing to engage in this fight is it worth you going through this with them because when they know that you know, they will hate you. And it's like you wonder, well, they hated me the whole time before. Yeah, but new levels, new devils, new levels. And the, their behavior towards you just amplifies. And it's not good, kind behavior. No. Like I said, the gloves come off and it's fight time. They hate the fact that you know, and they hate, and especially if you're somebody who discarded them first, they can't stand that because they've been grooming you from day one to be a certain way, to see yourself a certain way, to be a particular way in the relationship, and also to respond or react to the discard in a particular way. You see, narcissists know that this relationship isn't going to last forever. They know that. And all along the way, they feed you with how they want you to react once everything is over. But now if you had the audacity to discard them before they were done with you, oh, you've got to pay for that. Because you you got to know that with narcissists, everything is about a competition. And so if you beat them to a discard, that signifies weakness and failure to them. Remember, they lack object constancy. Everything is either all good or all bad. Meaning, if you beat them to the discard, you're better than them and they're weaker than they thought or 
what they know about themselves is true. Whereas if they beat you to the discard, that means you are just, it, it makes them feel like they are superior to you because you didn't get to do it before they did. It's all about this sick, twisted um, competition that they have. But if you are the one that discards them, essentially what happens is the tables turn. Or if you expose them, right, or they know that you know, the tables turn and everything comes out of order in their mind. And their only goal at this point is to destroy you. Because essentially what you've done is you've caused a narcissistic injury. And we know that narcissistic injuries are followed up by narcissistic rage. When you know your mission, well, when you know that you know who they are, your mission becomes staying steps ahead of them. Because if truth be told, although narcissists and, you know, they're, they're all different people, but they do follow different, I mean, they follow similar patterns. They kind of act the same way. We know that if there's an injury, there will be rage. And we know what the rage can look like. So you can anticipate what to expect. Your goal is to prepare yourself for what is to come. That's why it tells us to be wise as serpents. So understand that if you do decide to confront them and expose them, or if they become aware that you know, right? What you're going to experience is gaslighting on a new level. They've got to gaslight you to make you doubt your perception of reality. You, They won't allow you to think in peace and to think for yourself. You'll find that you may also be baited into a fight. Now, the bait and switch is one of their, one of their tools, right? And it's nothing more than another form of control, manipulation, and intimidation. So, for example, they may bait you into a fight and you go off trying to protect yourself and defend yourself and tell them how you are everything that they saying that you are currently not in the relationship. So you're trying to prove who you were and essentially saying things like, I loved you. I was there for you. I cared for you. And you may even reveal that you still feel those ways towards them. They have power there because they are able to determine how you are feeling. And if they can control you, your reaction or your response, they know that you still care. And that makes them feel good. That gives them narcissistic supply. Another thing is that they will use fear and manipulation against you. So what you may find is that, you know, you got to also remember that they've spent so much time, months, years, even decades sometimes grooming you to be a particular way and to see things through their eyes. And so when, when you, when you are exposing them or they know that, you know, if you've discarded them, what happens is they want to let you know that you'll never find another me. Now, the truth of the matter is we rejoice right there and we thank them for speaking that truth because we don't want another them. But it is used to make you feel like you won't find another one like me as if they are great and wonderful and mighty people and as if they did something beneficial to you. They'll even revert back to the good times to the love bombing days and make you feel as if, well, you know, if it wasn't for you being the way that you were, then I would still be that same person, the person that you first met, the person that you loved. When the truth is they can only ma maintain that facade for a period, a short period of time. Now, when you, when they have been exposed, when they have been busted, maybe you caught them cheating. Maybe you, you, you really did find out who they are, right? and you try to try to express what you know then it, you know and if they are able to successfully love bomb you understand that it's only going to be for a short period of time because still that was a narcissistic injury you flipped the table you made them act out of out of character or out of order because essentially they didn't want to have to beg you to stay and so you are still going to have to be punished for that. And so you'll find that the devaluation in another round of the relationship is always going to be worse than the prior one. And the discard 
is hot on its heels, they will drop you like a hot potato in the worst way. So another thing that you can anticipate is projection. And projection, in all truth, can be very effective to hurt our feelings and our emotions, right? All their abusive qualities just amp up. It all amplifies. All their insecurities and all their flaws are thrown onto the victim. It's your fault. Things are the way that they are. I try to love you, but because you are the way that you are, and they will say a lot of things. You are a bad parent. You are good for nothing. Nothing will come out of you. You will always struggle because you don't have me. I was your savior. I was here to help you. They'll even tell you that they are the blessing in your life. And when the blessing leaves, you are going to be destitute. I heard that one, but like they will say those things to you to um to mess with your mind and this is why it tells us to be wise as serpents do you really need another round of all of this nonsense of all of this abuse do you really need it this is why when you are able to go no contact if you discard them go no contact hot on your heels because what's hot on your heels should i say is all of this mess all of this abuse and if you're trying to cultivate an environment to truly heal, you don't need any of this. But it doesn't stop there. There's still so much that they can do. You know, they'll try to level with you. And when I say level with you, they'll try to make you feel like you're the problem. Again, you know, just narking. They'll try to make you feel like you're the problem and point back to times when you were um, when you were reacting. So they go back to when reactive abuse was in effect. You were yelling, you were screaming, you were saying whatever you were saying. Not that you were wrong, but because you were fed up, you were exhausted, you had had enough. And then, you know, the lid blows off. And now they point to that and tell you that, no, actually, you're the narcissist, not me. I'm just, re you know, and they'll tell you, it's, it's you who made me be this way. I've never had these issues in any of my relationships and they become the victim. And a lot of times you'll find that they'll do that when there is an audience. Especially those, especially, you know, when you're, when they, when they get you to react in a particular way, they always do that when there's an audience and they will remind you that don't you remember that so-and-so was present. Even they thought that you were irrational that you were selfish, that you were abusive towards me. That's not the truth. But they will play that card. And it's when they do that, essentially what they are doing is attacking your integrity. And they want you to end up questioning yourself like, man, am I the narcissist? I mean, like I did behave like this, you know. They want you to ask yourself those questions. And they'll devalue you. The gloves are off, remember? So they'll make sure that they hit below the belt. They'll attack your looks. They'll attack your character. They'll attack your finances. They'll attack whatever they can, your parenting, whatever it is. It doesn't matter. They have got to hit below the belt in order to make sure that you, you sustain a, sustain a substantial injury because they're desperate at this point and of course they will play the victim and the, you got to remember that these people are professional victims they know how to do it they know how to do it in the most unsuspecting way they will play the victim and they will blame you for everything and they play the victim to an audience they don't have to do it to you some of them get on social media and make videos and and talk about what you did when essentially it's what they did. Some of them will, you know, do it in the workplace if you met at work. Or if you're business partners or whatever it is. And you can be most sure that they will blackmail you. Remember what you did? Remember that video we made together? I'm going to send it to all your, I'm going to send it to your family. Remember what you said about so-and-so? 
when you were having a conversation and so and so may be very well aware that that's how you felt about whatever it was but they'll do that they'll blackmail you and of course whenever there is a narcissistic injury and narcissistic rage there is always a smear campaign they tell blatant lies and even though there may be evidence they still tell blatant lies and they do not care they simply do not care and if you fall for it and you end up back with them again they're going to devalue you very rapidly the love bombing will not last long and the discard is going to follow and it's going to be done in a way that is um, that hurts deeply and so when we go back to this passage that says behold I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves be ye therefore wise as a serpent and harmless as doves there's a connotation or there's an underlying tone that there needs to be a level of innocence in what we do when we're in some situations because when we think about how the serpent approached Eve in the garden right the serpent did appear to be innocent and well-meaning even though you know we, we know that the serpent was deceptful or deceitful should I say you know but essentially wisdom entails avoiding danger and you've got to understand that in order for you to fully heal you don't need any additional abuse you really don't you don't need to go through another round of this narcissistic torture or torture or abuse whatever you want to call it you don't need another round we don't need the memories of what the ending was or when they found out that we knew we don't need those memories we therefore don't need to you know to make it our business to be in their face and say I know who you are or you know or try to let them know that I got one up on you because let's be real and let's be honest sometimes it may feel like it's the right thing to do and it's gonna shut them down but essentially they're going to continue to be a narcissist right because that's not going to change them they're going to remain who they are and they're just gonna use it against you they're gonna use it against you and you know for many people that know that they're a narcissist right and they're and I'm talking about their flying monkeys those that are in the harem or part of the cult they'll defend this person and call you the problem like less is more sometimes in fact in many situations less is more and there's something about appearing to it says to be wise as serpents but harmless as doves meaning that there has to be a level of innocence and a level of purity um, because what wisdom in itself does is it leads to self-preservation and therefore it doesn't cause any additional harm or danger and the serpent in Genesis did cause harm and danger even though he appeared to be innocent but that's why it goes on to tell us to be as harmless as doves because essentially we're we're self-preserving we're 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 keeping ourselves away from harm and danger and you know when it says to be harmless as doves what essentially it means is that it, integrity is essential and we're going to remain integral to ourselves. We're going to remain integral to our healing journey. We're going to be integral to the things that matter most to us. And fighting with a narcissist or exposing them or trying to defend ourselves doesn't do anything for our integrity when it's directly with a the narcissist. There are systems in place, the courts, that we take our fights to. But to expose a narcissist, it's not really going to benefit us in any other way we can you know you can always tell people to be wise around them or, but you know narcissists they already have people believing what they want to believe the end goal is for you to heal as a person it's for you to keep your sanity not just for you know for yourself but for the people who are, who love you and are in your life and what do I mean like when you're raising children we don't need the added stress we don't need to be engaging in another war because they know that we know so sometimes you got to play dumb 
Sometimes you have to be unwise to them, but to be wise to yourself because it's another way that we protect ourselves. So these are my thoughts. And I look forward to hearing what you will share with me in the comments. Family, I appreciate your time and thank you for spending time with me today. May God bless you and may you fearlessly pursue your most significant state. Have a fantastic day.